Hi everybody, Martin at Flickin' Feathers again today and I'm tying a bead chain eyed seducer. It's a very old saltwater fly but it's still very very effective. Um, it works for all kinds of species, um, any of the saltwater bass or freshwater bass for that matter. Snook, tarpon, I'll eat it. everything. As always, we'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for everybody that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content, join the monthly fly tying classes, and uh, enter the giveaways. So I've got my hook my vise. Now I'm using for this an Umpqua U401 size 1 up, but you can use whatever sort of standard shank saltwater hook you like, like a mustard 3407. Um, it's fine. I mean, I'm just going to tie on my bead chain eyes first. And these are 5 mil stainless, um, so quite big. You can obviously adjust the size. Make sure they're nice and straight. And take some wraps over the eye and under the hook and then under the eye and over the hook to tighten up. Now, I'm not going to put a weed guard in this one, so I've got them right up close to the eye. And then I'm going to put a stiffener. Um, sometimes with the seducer, the hackle tail can be a bit tangle prone. And I've found the best thing to do, rather than a loop, is just I've got a sprig here of 20 pound hard nylon and I'm just going to tie it in and leave the back end sticking out beyond the bend and that's 20 mil, 25 mil. As long as it comes beyond the back of the hook a, a bit, you're you're fine. Because when the feather tries to wrap, it tries to wrap around this and then just comes off the end and it stops it fouling. You can do that on any um, hackle tailed fly if you like. Um, up to yourself. And then, but a thin varnish, head cement. Right, I say it often, but super glue is not really that useful in the salt. Um, you know, you could put it on, but it, in the end, it's not really doing anything because the salt water degrades it. So, for the tail, I'm using four saddle hackles, just strong, ordinary strong saddle. Um, you can buy like the nice, like the white saddles if you want. The American saddles are quite good, but to be honest, I think you actually get a a better fishing fly with the cheap stuff. It's it's they're a bit softer, a bit you know they're maybe not just as perfectly uniform, but they, they I think they swim a wee bit better. Unless you're looking for something that's to be really nicely matched up, these are ideal. Tail length is up to yourself, but I think you want at least like two hook lengths behind the hook, right? So the hook's like the first third of the fly. So I'm going to tie on two on my side. And I've tied them curving away. from the hook. Just make sure you line up the tips. But you can of course tie them curving in. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Two on your side. Colour wraps. See how you're sitting. You don't need to be super fussy as long as you've got the length right. What happens is when you fish it they sort of 
pull together anyway. Good. So I'll trim my waist. And tidy up. And I trimmed that like three quarters of the body length or, or so. Um, so that as I go forward, I'll sort of gradually sort of get a smooth taper down rather than having the step. Got a bit of flash. I'm just using silver flash, plain flash about. Use whatever you like. I mean, silver or pearl flash about is probably as good as anything else. Tie it down on one side, fold it over, and have it down the other. I like the flash on the outside of the feathers. And I'll just trim away the waist. Just slightly longer than the feathers. If I wet that, it will do the next fly. And now the body is just more more hackle. So we'll tie them in two at a time. I'll grab two broadly similar feathers. I, tie, I like to tie them by the tip so that it's all sort of thickening in the way forward. And I don't bother cutting the tips, so I'll just tie them in and then I'll run down. And again, see so I'm sort of smoothing and creating a wee taper. And just wind these hackles. Touch and turns, and I like to just take a sweep between each wrap, to sweep back and you'll probably need to do a couple of sets of, of hackles on a fly this size. Now I'm getting to the end of the a nice clean fibre so I'm going to come back catch that I'm no too keen on having the marabou feathers the marabou like feathers in the in the body of the fly but if you want to you can Okay, and just look through, grab a couple of nice looking hackles. And by the tip again. I'm going to trim these. Short of the bead chain. And then just the same again, just wind. You don't need hackle pliers because they're big feathers. Bang forward. Sweeping back the wraps each turn. And then same as before, when I get to the end of the sort of clean hackle barbs, I'll tie it off. I'm just going to tidy everything up at this stage. Now I'm going to get a chartreuse feather. And I reckon I only need a single feather here. And I'm going to get a nice big one. And then just the same, I'm going to catch it in by the tip. Now, so that it's easy to trim away the waist, I just fold that tip back and tie over it. And that means I'm not going to have hackle fibres sticking 
in my way when I trim this tip out. Like that. And as always, when I come back to the front, I'm going to go through the eyes, and this is what really solidifies the eyes. Right, this is much stronger than you often see folk they tie like a few wraps and then super glue it. But if you tie your eyes, do the body, then tie it again. It's really locked in much more securely. And then just same as you did with the with the other feather, just wind this close touch and turns. Sweep back between each. Build that flash of colour and you can use red, blue, you know, whatever, orange, tie them in black and purple. And I want this feather bigger, right, that's, I'm coming right down and I'm going to get a couple of turns or a turn maybe with a sort of soft mobile feather here because uh, I, I like it at the front. Because it sort of just gives you that wee bit extra length and comes back. Trim away the stem and tidy up. Now, you can finish the fly here, but I like to just get a wee bit of, in this case, chartreuse ice dub, but it's something to match the colour of the fly and just tidy up in between the dumbbells. It's completely unnecessary from a fishing point of view, but I just like that wee slightly tidier front end. Then we'll come in, oops, finish. And again, there we go. Put it tight. Your two whips. Make sure they're nice and tight. Right, put nice and strong. And then trim away the waist. Can if you want, you can sort of pick out the pick out the ice tub. Although you catch a couple of fish and it'll it'll come out anyway. But there you go. That's basically the bead chain sea juicer. A fantastic saltwater fly. Right, it works for everything. Anything that eats a bait fish, or you would. A streamer type situation will eat this. Easy to tie, very simple, but very, very effective. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines, guys. Bye.